There's a rumor spreading that Saudi Arabia is pumping millions of gallons of salt water underground, not on the surface where people can see it, not into visible reservoirs or treatment plants, underground, deep beneath the scorching desert sand where nobody would think to look. And here's the part that makes this story absolutely wild. The rumors are true, but the question that should be keeping you up at night isn't whether they're doing it, it's why. Why would one of the driest countries on earth, a nation that's been stuck in a perpetual water crisis for decades, deliberately bury water underground when every drop is desperately needed on the surface? The answer involves an engineering feat so audacious that it sounds like fiction. Saudi Arabia, a country with zero natural rivers, no lakes, and barely any rainfall, has constructed something that shouldn't exist, an underground river system longer than the Nile. And if you think that's impressive, wait until you hear what they had to blast through to build it. Let's start with the brutal reality of Saudi Arabia's geography. This is one of the most water-starved regions on the planet. The country sits in the middle of a vast desert where summer temperatures regularly hit 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Rainfall is not just scarce, it's almost non-existent, averaging only about 4 inches per year in most regions. To put that in perspective, Seattle gets over 37 inches annually. London gets around 23 inches. Even cities we consider dry, like Los Angeles, get 15 inches. Saudi Arabia gets four. For decades, this seemed like an insurmountable problem. You can't build a modern nation, sustain a growing population, or develop major cities without reliable access to fresh water. And yet Saudi Arabia has done exactly that. The question is how? Since 2021, the country has constructed 522 dams. Now, if you're picturing massive hydroelectric structures like the Hoover Dam, think smaller and more strategic. In Saudi Arabia's case, these dams primarily serve one critical function, capturing and storing the limited rainfall and floodwaters that do occasionally occur. These dams collect water through wadis, which are dry riverbeds that temporarily fill with water after those rare rainfalls. When you look at Saudi Arabia's rainfall map, it seems almost laughable to suggest that a few inches of rain could make any meaningful difference. But here's where it gets interesting. At certain times of the year, so much rain falls in concentrated bursts that it's actually enough to supply entire cities with water. The dams are positioned to intercept these seasonal floods and rare rainfall events. They have to be, because in Saudi Arabia's extreme heat, water left exposed would evaporate almost immediately. The total storage capacity of these 522 dams is staggering, 650 billion gallons of water. One of the most important is the Wadi Baish Dam, located about 14 kilometers east of Jizan in Mecca province. Constructed between 2003 and 2009, it ranks as the second largest dam in the country with an approximate capacity of 250 million cubic meters. This single structure helps with flood control, irrigation, local water supply, and something called groundwater recharge, which we'll get to in a moment. In the Mecca area alone, Saudi Arabia has built 60 dams with an overall capacity of 232 billion gallons of water. That's enough to fill over 350,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. But here's the uncomfortable truth that Saudi officials don't advertise. These dams are only a secondary water source. The country's primary water supply doesn't come from surface collection at all. It comes from something far more precarious and frankly terrifying when you understand the math. Deep beneath Saudi Arabia's desert surface, lie massive underground reservoirs, ancient aquifers filled with water. Geological surveys estimate there are approximately 26 trillion gallons of groundwater sitting right under Saudi soil. That sounds like an enormous, almost inexhaustible amount. It's not. Only a tiny fraction of this underground water is renewable, about 739 billion gallons per year. This renewable portion gets naturally replenished through rainfall seeping down through the ground. It can be safely extracted without threatening future supplies because nature replaces what's taken. But the vast majority of Saudi Arabia's groundwater is what scientists call fossil water. Ancient water that's been trapped underground for thousands, even millions of years. This water comes from a time when the Arabian Peninsula was dramatically different, when rain fell regularly and rivers flowed across regions that are now nothing but sand and rock. Over millennia, that rainwater seeped into the ground and collected in massive natural underground reservoirs where it's remained ever since, locked away from the atmosphere, protected from evaporation, just sitting there in the dark. And here's the terrifying part. Once fossil water is pumped out, it's gone forever. It doesn't refill. 
Saudi Arabia doesn't get nearly enough rain to replenish these ancient reserves. Every gallon extracted is a gallon that took thousands of years to accumulate and will never be replaced in any time frame that matters to human civilization. It's like finding a billion dollars buried in your backyard, except the money disintegrates the moment you touch it and there's no way to get more. You can spend it, but you can't save it, invest it, or grow it. Once it's gone, you're broke. So what's the consumption rate? Saudi Arabia uses far more water than it can naturally replenish. The renewable groundwater doesn't even come close to meeting half of what the country needs. Water gets used for drinking and sanitation, obviously, but also for irrigation, industry, maintaining green parks in the middle of the desert, washing cars, filling swimming pools, and dozens of other applications. The demand is enormous. The renewable supply is pathetically small, and the fossil water reserves, while massive, are finite and shrinking with every passing year. Making matters worse, rainfall in Saudi Arabia isn't just scarce, it's wildly unpredictable. Some years bring slightly more precipitation. Other years barely produce any rain at all. There's no guarantee when the next significant rainfall will arrive or if it will arrive at all. Relying on groundwater, especially the non-renewable ancient reserves, is like spending from a savings account with no income. Eventually, you hit zero. So what happens when the water runs out? If extraction continues at unsustainable levels, these underground reserves will dry up, leaving Saudi Arabia with catastrophically limited water options. And this isn't a distant theoretical problem. It's happening now, with a rapidly growing population and ever-increasing water demands. Saudi Arabia also operates 99 wastewater treatment facilities across the country. In 2019, they treated and reused 1.3 billion gallons per day. Projections suggest this number will grow by about 4% annually until 2050. But even that aggressive expansion won't be enough because the country's population is expected to increase at an even faster rate. Faced with rapidly depleting groundwater, almost no rainfall and exploding demand for fresh water, Saudi engineers had to think radically. Since nature didn't provide rivers, they decided to build their own. With the Red Sea and Persian Gulf nearby, the solution seemed obvious pump seawater inland. But there's a massive problem with that plan. Seawater is, obviously, salt water. You can't drink it. You can't irrigate crops with it. You can't use it for industry. It's fundamentally useless without processing. So Saudi Arabia embarked on one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in modern history. They didn't just build pipelines to move water. They constructed a vast underground river system a man-made waterway stretching approximately 8,700 miles from end to end. Let that number sink in for a moment. The Nile River, the longest natural river on Earth, measures about 4,135 miles. Saudi Arabia built an artificial underground water transport system more than twice that length. Unlike surface canals or ordinary above-ground pipes, most of these pipelines run deep underground. This design isn't accidental or aesthetic. It's absolutely critical in a desert climate where exposed water would evaporate at catastrophic rates. During summer months, when temperatures reach 122 degrees Fahrenheit, water left on the surface would simply disappear into the atmosphere. Originally, Saudi Arabia's water channels ran mostly along the surface, but engineers quickly realized this approach was unsustainable. The new underground system preserves water quality, shields it from contamination and extreme heat, and maintains consistent pressure and flow efficiency over enormous distances. Now, this isn't Saudi Arabia's only water network. As of 2019, the total length of all existing water supply infrastructure was estimated at about 78,200 miles. But there's a crucial difference. That earlier network consists mostly of surface-level pipelines laid above ground or buried shallowly. They're exposed to harsh weather, high evaporation rates, and physical damage. The new Red Sea pipeline system, by contrast, runs deep underground. It's essentially an invisible river, protecting and transporting desalinated water across vast distances to inland cities and industrial zones. This system wasn't built for show or national pride, it was built for survival. With limited natural water sources and massive urban centers like Riyadh, Jeddah, and Mecca demanding reliable water supplies, the kingdom finally achieved a secure method to harvest water from the sea. But constructing this underground river was a monumental engineering challenge that pushed the limits of what's physically possible. Moving water from the Red Sea and Persian Gulf to inland cities required carving through the Hijaz Mountains. Engineers used tunnel boring machines and controlled explosions to blast through dense granite and limestone layers that posed serious resistance to excavation. 
The pipes themselves, some over six feet wide, had to be precisely laid to ensure stable pressure without risking leaks or catastrophic collapses. After clearing the mountainous terrain, construction teams faced the brutal Arabian desert. In central Saudi Arabia, summer heat consistently exceeds 122 degrees Fahrenheit, making daytime operations extremely dangerous for workers. Teams adapted by working during early morning hours or overnight shifts, but extreme heat wasn't the only obstacle. Shifting sand dunes, violent dust storms, and occasional flash floods created constant unpredictability. Laying pipelines underground minimizes evaporation and protects the system from weather damage, but it also requires extensive deep trenching and soil stabilization across thousands of miles. Now here's the part you've probably been wondering about. If this underground river pumps seawater, how does salty ocean water help anyone? The answer is desalination, the process of removing salt and other impurities from seawater to make it safe for human consumption. Desalination plants solve the fundamental problem by transforming seawater from the Red Sea and Persian Gulf into usable fresh water. But this technology isn't some miracle solution. It has significant downsides. Desalination is extraordinarily energy intensive, requiring massive amounts of electricity, most of which still comes from non-renewable sources in Saudi Arabia. This makes it expensive, sometimes costing three to 10 times more than traditional water sources. Additionally, desalination creates environmental problems of its own. The process produces brine, a highly concentrated saltwater byproduct that can harm marine ecosystems if not properly managed. Despite these challenges, Saudi Arabia is the world's leading producer of desalinated water. In the 1980s, the country's desalination infrastructure was minimal, but by 2011, about 30 plants operated along the coastline. That number increased to 33 by 2023 and jumped to 43 facilities by 2024. The Ras Al Khair station on the eastern coast is particularly noteworthy. This facility costs $7.2 billion to construct and holds the Guinness World Record as the largest desalination plant in the world. It produces 792 million gallons of fresh water daily, enough to support millions of residents and industries. Another major plant in the city of Jubail consistently produces around 211 million gallons every single day. When compared to other nations, Saudi Arabia's progress in desalination is unmatched. Countries like Israel, Australia, and the UAE have made significant advances, but Saudi Arabia continues dominating this technology. But pumping and desalinating water is only part of Saudi Arabia's long-term survival strategy. The country has also launched one of the most ambitious environmental restoration programs on the planet. Now here's the part you've probably been wondering about. If this underground river pumps seawater, how does salty ocean water help anyone? The answer is desalination, the process of removing salt and other impurities from seawater to make it safe for human consumption. Desalination plants solve the fundamental problem by transforming seawater from the Red Sea and Persian Gulf into usable fresh water. But this technology isn't some miracle solution. It has significant downsides. Desalination is extraordinarily energy intensive, requiring massive amounts of electricity, most of which still comes from non-renewable sources in Saudi Arabia. This makes it expensive, sometimes costing three to 10 times more than traditional water sources. Additionally, desalination creates environmental problems of its own. The process produces brine, a highly concentrated saltwater byproduct that can harm marine ecosystems if not properly managed. And they've already started building it one impossible project at a time.